Hey, welcome back. All right. So, so far what we have is we have created some routes here for about three of our pages, right? But now let's do uh, something. Let's see how we can transfer information to these routes. And before we do that though, I want to show you a shortcut for routing. So for example, uh, this route here, specifically uh, this one is user so it means if we type user at the end there we go to that particular page okay we've seen that before but there's a shortcut to doing this if for example your page is a static page meaning that you will not need to um, you not need to transfer any data uh, you don't need to do it like this what you could do is something like this let me uh, add a comment on this one comment block comment okay so what you could do instead is just get user the way it is here and then let's remove everything else here up to user there like so and delete that okay so here you have a very simple thing you say if this is the url then send it to this view but you have to change that to view like so so what you're doing here is telling it that for as long as it's like this just send it to view okay so let's see if that actually works so if i refresh here of course nothing will change but if we go to user here you see that now it actually takes me to the user page as predicted there. So I don't need to do it this way, this more elaborate way. So then what is the advantage of doing it this way? Well, the advantage of doing it this way is because you can pass in some variables here if you want it to. So let's see how we can do that. So let me remove the block comment here for a second. So if we do the, we do it this way, what I could do, let's say for example, I want, this is a profile page and this is a user's page, right? So say user, but then we want the page to load a particular user. So we have to pass in some variables in the URL, for example, the user ID or the user name. So if at the end there I put an ID, for example, so maybe the user ID is something like this. let's say the that is the user id so how do i get it to the page so if i refresh like this ooh, wait a minute let me hit enter okay so if i refresh now you see that it gives me a 404 which says page not found all right and that's because the routes are very particular if you add more variables at the end it becomes a different route to this one so it's no longer this but it's this with an id here okay but then if i just type id there it still won't work let me come back here for a second if i refresh you see that it's still saying not found because it's expecting the actual text of id at the top there so what we could do here is instead put this in curly brackets like that so what I've done here is tell it that this will be a variable and I'm going to call this variable ID. So let me come back here for a second. And if I refresh this time, you see that it actually works because it knows that this can be any value. It's just a, a placeholder. There's a variable there. So that's how you get the variable. But how do we get it to the page itself? Okay. So let's come back to the page itself, which is user.blade.php. Now, if I come here, I want to be able to echo out the, so I'm going to use echo like this. I'm going to echo out the ID, something like that. Okay, now in PHP, you can replace all this PHP echo with just an echo sign like that, and it will work the same way. So let me save that, and let's see what happens when we refresh the page. So this time I get an error, right? Now we're going to talk about uh, error handling in here because this has a very robust system of doing things. 
If you notice here it says database seems incorrect, that's because we haven't set our database uh, variables, so just ignore that. But here you get the actual error, so it's saying undefined variable ID in this file. So, and that is the route there. So ID is undefined. So it's telling me that inside this blade, this blade file, this ID is undefined. So how do we get it here? Well, it's actually quite simple. Once we do this, we're supposed to supply it inside the function as ID, like so. That's the name, we supply it there. And once we supply it inside the function, it means it's available for use here. So here, for example, I can, uh, if I want to, I can echo out the ID like that. So let me come back here for a second and refresh. So you see it echoed out there, but still we have that error because we still haven't transferred it to the view itself, but we've echoed it there. So it means it's being recognized as the a variable there. Okay. So now what we can do since it's available here, we can on this other side, add an array. So for example, I can say something like ID. Oh, wait a second, comma there. And then I'll put ID. So I'm creating uh, an array here. I can put a comma here and put another variable. If I had another variable there, that's not a problem. I can do that. For example, if I say uh, me is equal to something like so, right? Then here I can add that. Let's say me is equal to the actual variable me, something like this. So this is how I pass in uh, variables into the view. So since we have this ID, if we go to the view here, it will be available now. So we should get rid of that error now. So if I refresh, Ooh, syntax error unexpected. All right, so let's see where is this. So we have the unexpected arrow there. That's because I put a comma there. Sorry about that. An array should be like this, uh, the key and then the arrow and then the value. So key value pair like that. So let's try that again refresh and there we go. So you see that uh, we are echoing the ID here. That's the first one. And then we are echoing the view itself, this part, and then we're echoing the ID again. So this is what you are seeing here. All right. So this kind of thing here, instead of doing it this way, what you can do is supply your array like that, and then just do something like uh, create an array here. I'll say R array like that. Then I want to add my variables there. So I'll add ID like so. I'll say it's equal to ID. So if I had another variable, because I can add more than this, I can add ID and then maybe I can add, uh, I don't know, uh, product or something like that. And then I have to supply it here if it's going to work product like that and then I can add both here ID and product something like that and then just supply the array like so. So once I supply the array it's going to extract this array meaning the variable names will be the keys right here. So there'll be a variable named product inside the view and another variable named ID. So let me come back to the blade uh, template here and then there's ID, so I'll say ID, something like this, and then simply uh, let me duplicate that and add product like so. Okay, so if I now refresh, um, I'll get not found, but uh, that's because uh, I haven't added one extra thing here, so I'm going to say uh, book, something like that. Okay, so now you can see that this is the user page, and then there's ID there, and then there's product book from the URL. So this is how you get data from uh, the view into the URL.
Okay. So hopefully uh, you've learned something from there. Let me come back here for a second. So this is why uh, having this has an advantage over doing that. Okay. So I'll see you in the next video.